Hey guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist here on YouTube. And in case you guys are thinking that my voice sounds especially sexy today, that's because it is. I had a bit of an allergy attack earlier this week, so on top of this, I'm now like slightly stuffed up up here too, but I'm doing better. Despite all that, let's talk some more. Recently, I've been noticing a trend. I think one of the most common things I hear from my students is that they straight up admit to me that they had the time to practice, but they didn't because they were tired. So in favor of retaining their mental health, they decided to not practice as much. But then that made them feel guilty for not practicing more. When the guilt sets in, it kind of discourages them from practicing. I wanted to talk to you guys about what I normally tell my students too when they run into this issue. Number one is to not fight the way you normally want to practice. So this is the way your brain works. This is the way your body works. Not everyone practices the same way. The way I practice will not be the same way that you practice. So for myself, I think the biggest mental hurdle when it came to practice routines for me was that I could never really identify with people who practice like four to six hours at a time. To be really frank with you guys, my attention span is not that long. I cannot do that. I'm the type of person who can concentrate like crazy in the span of 10 to 15 minutes. So like if I put my mind to it, I can learn a lot in 10 to 15 minutes and then retain it. But if you were to tell me to stick in the same topic for more than 15 minutes at a time, like literally the same topic. It's not like in class, within the lesson, you know, you're talking about multiple different things. Like in history, you'd be talking about like, oh, how this event led to this event. And so in my mind, like when we're talking about the second event, to me, that's like a new thing. But if you were to tell me to like, practice the same exercise for more than 15 minutes, I can't do it. My brain starts to like shut down. I can be drilling it, but like none of it is going into my head. It's just in one ear and out the other. But for a long time, I fought myself. And of course, I always failed. I would go into lessons feeling extremely guilty because I could only concentrate on the one etude for 15 minutes during my own practice session. Whenever I was asked how much I practiced it, I had to be honest and say that I only practiced it like 10 or 15 minutes a day, if even that. Because, you know, again, the guilt set in. So then the next day I was discouraged from even wanting to look at that etude. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing to say so, but like it took me until I was in, I would say my masters before I realized that I really should just work with how I naturally work. Since I know that I can only concentrate on something for 15 minutes at a time, I decided to just take advantage of that. What I need to do then is go through my music, all of it, exercises, etudes, repertoire, whatever. And I needed to mark all of the places that I needed to work on more. For one practice session, I would pick a few things. And each of those few things, I would spend like a hardcore 10 to 15 minutes learning that one thing, relearning it, correcting my mistakes, whatever, on that one thing. Because I gave myself the permission to stop looking at that one thing after 15 minutes, it actually motivated me to like try and correct as much of it as possible within that 15 minutes. And so I learned a lot faster that way. Like it was insane the progress I made once I started to actually work with how I naturally work. At the end of that 15 minutes, I'm like, okay, now I'm gonna move on to this other thing and I'm gonna work on this other different thing. And guys, for a person like me, time flies when you do that. That's when I can start to accidentally find myself practicing for like an hour or two hours. And I'm like, where did the time go? On top of these sort of like short bursts for myself that I do like 15 minutes of that, 15 minutes of that, every now and then once in a blue moon, I will just want to give myself a boot camp. Like I'm just in that mental space to be like, I'm gonna do tone for 45 minutes today. I'm just going to like explore it to the bitter ends of every little thing that I can possibly observe about my tone. I will just have these sort of obsessively wanting to work on one thing for like 45 minutes an hour 
every single day for a week. But then it'll only last for like a week. And then like after that week, I can't do it anymore for a long time. So it's almost like taking a flute retreat for myself where I just like bust my own butt for a week. And I know that I'm only doing it for a week. So I just like go at it. I'm a pretty go hard kind of person, but in bursts. That's how I would describe my own way of practicing. I don't know if any of you guys are like that. If you are like that, that's how I do it. If you're not like that, I encourage you to kind of like note down when you get bored and then try and figure out why you got bored. Also note down what makes you really interested in something. After a while, when you've written down like notes about yourself and observations about yourself, then you can kind of start seeing a pattern arise. And when you start to see the pattern arise of how you practice the best, take advantage of it. Yes, it does take trial and error to kind of figure out what you're like. Basically what I'm saying is you need to find out how you practice. Don't compare how you practice with how someone else practices because you can't. The second thing is don't fight your schedule. This is not something that you can really control. If this is your work schedule, especially your income depends on your work so like you you can't change your work schedule that's up to your boss look at your schedule practically really ask yourself how much time do i actually need to rest can i actually feasibly practice 45 minutes a day an hour a day most likely the answer to that question is no especially if you're working you're gonna have to come up with other ways of learning skills and maintaining skills. That's mostly what practicing is for, learning and maintaining. In my experience, learning can be done in bursts. Maintenance needs to be done every day. But if you think about it, it's kind of like brushing your teeth. When you were a kid, brushing your teeth is really freaking awkward, right? Because like holding the brush and like turning it and stuff like that, like that's pretty darn awkward. Like the movement is really awkward, but you only do it for like four minutes a day, two minutes in the morning, two minutes in the evening. You probably didn't even notice that over time, you just started to develop muscle memory for how to do it. And then now you don't even think about what you're doing. You just kind of do it. So that's a really good example of muscle memory maintenance practicing. That's what I call it. Maintenance practicing does not require you to drill for hours and hours on end. Maintenance practice requires you to do it as often as possible, but you don't have to do it for super long every single time you do it. So what you can do instead is come up with very short maintenance exercises or star the parts that in your music that you know that you know, you're not very familiar with and just drum it out every day for like a minute. What I like to tell my students is like, in order to keep your tone, even when you don't have time to practice, take out your flute at least once a day and just do harmonics for two minutes, then put the flute away. At the very least, you're still reminding your mouth what it's supposed to do for its embouchure on the flute. Even if you only do that two minutes is enough to just keep the muscle memory alive. That way you still maintain your tone and then you don't feel like you know, you've know you completely given up after a week. You can do the same thing for fingers. I like to use the Machiavellian two exercises from the Trevor Y technique book. I will just pick a couple really, really difficult ones for me that I have starred and I will just do those ones for like a minute, two minutes, put down the flute and you're fine. It's just to remind your fingers how they work. That's it, maintenance. But you will have pockets of time in your schedule after deadlines have happened. You'll have a calm after the storm or something like that. If you know that's coming up, schedule in learning practice sessions where you like learn a whole section of a new piece of repertoire. You learn a whole new section of your etude. You learn an excerpt. You don't have to feel guilty for not practicing enough if you are at the very least still maintaining your playing even with just like a couple, literally a couple minutes of practicing a day. And then just saving your learning practicing sessions for later on when you actually have more time. This leads very nicely into my third and final thought about practicing. You need to figure out if you are a time oriented person or an event oriented person. That pretty much dictates 
how satisfied you feel with a practice session. If you are a time-oriented person, you will feel satisfied if you know for a fact that you hit a time goal. You can still do maintenance practice sessions versus learning practice sessions. In that case, I would place maintenance practicing sessions with a goal of like five minutes. For learning practicing sessions, I would guesstimate about an hour would be what time-oriented people tend to enjoy. If you give yourself an hour, schedule it in, and then you reach that end of the hour, like, mm, you're gonna feel very satisfied. But if you are an event-oriented person, you will enjoy more of a project based feel in your practicing. For your maintenance practicing sessions, I would pick topics for you to review. So maybe one day you can do tone. So you would do harmonics for like two to five minutes. And then you know you've done your harmonics, you can pat yourself on the back. The next day you can be like, oh, the event, the project for today is scales. So I'm going to do a couple scales for two to five minutes, done. And then the third day, pick something else, an excerpt that you learned and you're just maintaining and you just play that excerpt for two to five minutes. Pat yourself on the back, you're done. For learning practicing sessions, don't look at the time. If you look at the time, but you are an event or project-based person, the clock is just going to give you a lot of anxiety, okay? So just don't look at it. Pick a practical amount to learn. So if you're looking at an etude, I would learn the first section. Take your time learning it, explore it. Don't feel like you're bound by time or anything like that. Once you've, you're done learning it, then look at the clock and see if you actually practically have more time to practice. If you don't, that's fine. Pat yourself on the back, be like, yeah, I learned something today. The next day, if you have time for yet another learning practicing session, then you can learn the next section. And there you have it. Those are my key points of what I tell students. Typically, I will figure out each of my students' preferences, and then I will suggest a practice routine that would fit well with their personalities and with their schedules, because you have to balance both. I obviously do have more to talk about for this topic. Let me know if you would like for me to talk more, but also keep in mind that not all of the points that I will talk about will necessarily apply to you, because again, it depends on your personality and it depends on your actual schedule. But I thought this video would be just at the very least least broad enough that most people can at least glean something helpful. I hope that was helpful for you guys. Let me know in the comments what kind of practicer are you? Let's just share. Maybe we can help each other out, help each other figure ourselves out, and then everyone can practice better. As usual, if you like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. Hit that bell icon to be notified of when I post. If you want to support me, head on over to my Patreon. Otherwise, you can find me on my social media networks that are listed down below. This is my last video, which I will put a link to up here for you guys, and I will see you guys next week. Bye.